Okay, so basically, yes, thanks, Steve, for that introduction. Uh, yes, it is sad. I'm quite happy to have insight. Um, Sichuan, this is basically going to be Sichuan 2017 with a, a little bit of 2015. So originally, um, Kat and I had decided that we were, we were going to do this trip in October 15, which was Qinghai, so the roof of the world, uh, which was just amazing. But they offered uh, an extension to Sichuan, so we thought we would do that too. Um, but we dipped on uh, Giant Panda, on Red Panda, um, and decided that we wanted to go back. And as Stephen and I were talking about earlier, we decided that we would, because we'd kept in touch with our guide, uh, Roland, who's uh, German, um, and lives in Chengdu, that we would just go straight through him and you know, we could organize it the way we wanted. Um, one of the things for me was, I can remember really clearly my grandfather, who was a janitor in the Further Education College, used to give me the cards that came in these huge vats of tea that, um, and there was dinosaurs or flags of the world. And one of his friends had some older ones. And one of them was a set of birds of the world and on that was um one of the birds on that was crested ibis and it talked about there being seven individuals left and that really stuck with me um from probably being six or maybe seven um so we decided that we I, i'm not quite sure how i realized it actually they weren't that far away ish so we asked him to add in, um that to our trip so actually Theoretically, this is Sichuan and Shangzi, uh, with a bit of Gansu throwing in uh, because we snuck over the border. So, this is a map of China. Uh, Sichuan has the green arrow. Um, Shangzi also has a green arrow. So they're kind of central China. Um, we went in November because that was a good time to go to see mammals, mainly, and that obviously was our focus. Although. As Stephen said, we um, also were quite keen to see some of the birds. Um, and the downside is that there really were very few butterflies and dragonflies about because it was cold. Um, so this is uh, stolen from Nature Trek. Um, it's not quite what we did, but it is roughly what we did. The really interesting thing is that every, everywhere seems to have multiple names. So we did fly to Chengdu, the capital of uh, Sichuan. It was still, when we went the first time, so two years prior to this one, it was still recovering from a, a, an incredibly powerful earthquake. And some of the driving was a bit hairy. The roads were, you could see where they'd been completely destroyed. A huge rocks the size of houses have kind of crashed down these passes. Um, so we went there, uh, Dujiang Yang, um, Beijing, um, La Bahie, we went to uh, Wollong, we went to the first time, but not this time because um, we, they weren't letting people in to look for the pandas. And then we went up to the north um, near Ruaragai, which is um, the Zoyi grasslands, which is a completely different type of habitat. Pingwu is a, a, a fairly newish place for um, giant panda. And then Tanjiaha, we been to before and it's just got amazing mammals and birds um, and scenery and then we snuck off um, from Tanjiahu you can uh, walk up this mountain where the tragopans are and if you keep going you uh, can sneak into Gansu and then we drove to Shangzi because we wanted to try and see the crested ibis and then in Shangzi just to give you an idea uh, Fu Ping is, this is also stolen from Nature Trek, Fu Ping is where people go there because, um, again, it's a good spot for giant panda. Uh, we went to uh, not quite that far and we didn't, unfortunately, go to Xi'an and see the terracotta warrior. So having been to China twice, I've never seen the um, Great Wall or the terracotta army, um, which makes me a bit of a Philistine, I'm afraid. So November 17, so we flew into Chengdu, uh, straightforward, met Roland, and then drove on to Labahu, which is about four hours, and we got there uh, very late at night. Um, but obviously there's time for spotlighting, because uh, there's always time for spotlighting. I thought it was fairly limited, and what we saw was these, um, the Chinese goral, 
um, up on a ledge uh, off the roadside. And that was kind of all we saw, but we were a bit knackered. So we went back and got some sleep. So Goral is one of these weird, it's not really a goat and it's not really an antelope and it's kind of somewhere in the middle. Um, so the next day we're up bright and early, spent the whole day in Labahu, a bit of early morning spotlighting and spotlighting in the evening. And as you can see, we were somewhat excited at seeing red pandas uh, because we had dipped hugely on red bear and had a sniff at them the first time. Um, and we were somewhat excited. And but as you can see, it was a bit misty, a bit cloudy. Uh, it's a really, in, a really nice landscape, big sort of primarily coniferous forest. Um, this, these little cuties, this we know striped squirrel, a bit like um, there's a whole range of striped squirrel, well, I suppose small striped squirrels in Asia. I've seen quite a few, well, we've seen quite a few in India, particularly um, different ones. Stephen, you probably saw the the one up in um, Assam, Arunachal Pradesh. We've seen different ones in Cambodia, but these guys are the swinos. They've got really cute little tufty ears, and they're tiny. Um, the really, really, really strange thing about I find about going to kind of this sort of part of Asia is you're kind of going along. You think I recognise that sound, and I'm not very. I'm really bad at bird calls. And you look up, and there's a call tip or a wren that's the same as ours. And you're just like, it doesn't seem right somehow to be the other end of the world. And there you go. But so we had cold tip, but then we also have the red billed blue magpies, which um, are somewhat different than the ones we get here um, and are really stunning. Fortunately, quite raucous, but we're quite far, um, quite distant, I suppose. We're a bit, uh, perhaps a bit shy. Um, seen them uh, the last trip we saw them in town um, and they were just really didn't care about us which was rather nice. Um, we had a bunch of um, a or a few olive black pipits. Uh, I am legendarily bad at brown bird identification um, so I kept like streaky ones so that makes things a bit easier um, and then we had this huge flock of uh, speckled wood pigeon which was a new bird to me. I quite like pigeons and um, there's rather too many species to my liking and that I haven't seen um, but these guys were, we, we didn't get any sort of perched close views of them. Uh, just had a lot of them flying by uh, fairly distantly, but you can see the sort of the pale heads on some of them. And then other birds we had when we were walking around is the wren, you know, it's like, oh, recognize him. Um, we saw, um, China's great for full vet as we saw a whole different range of fulbettas and parrot bills and rose finches. Um, but the first one we had was grey hooded, uh, which is quite easily identifiable by its uh, rather sinister looking eye. Um, there were a surprising number in many ways of warblers around still. So this is an ashy throated warbler um, and greenback tit, which looks just a bit like a great tit to me, but um, you know, I like a bird that's colourful that I can actually identify uh, fairly easily compared to your um, pipits and larks and uh, don't start me on cystic colours. Um, and then we see red panda um, and the top left one is the first one we saw and it was quite difficult to get near, you don't want to get too near, you don't want to scare it, um, but they're also in fairly thick trees that are, as you can see, got lots of moss and branches, so quite hard to get a decent shot. But this uh, second one decided it would come down so we could see it. Um, they're interesting, the red pandas here, I think, were a lot darker than certainly the ones I've seen in Chester Zoo, which seem a lot more russet. Um, but, you know, it, it's hard not to want to take them home, to be fair. Uh, and I think they're going to win most polls of the cutest mammal, I think, to be fair. Um, and they're just really cute. Um, again, I think this particular one has quite muted markings. So some of the other ones have a, a more obvious sort of ringed tail to them. Um, but it's quite impressive. He was very secure coming down the tree. Um, very, as you can see, very mossy. Um, so then the other main thing we saw, we got pictures of that day is this uh, wapiti. So in effect, one of the red deer. Um, I 
I'm a, no, I suppose I have an ungulate problem. Um, that's probably, a, that, well, they are my favorite group of mammals or family of mammals. Uh, this was a new one for me and I was really excited, then realized that actually they'd been imported. It wasn't, uh, they're, they're naturally found more up on the, uh, the border with Russia, it's up Manchuria. Um, and the owner, or the person who bought the um, reserve had uh, shipped them in. Um, and then at night spotlighting, we were, oh, I was, we were really happy because we saw this red and white giant flying squirrel, which is just the one that you always see in the pictures of Chinese giant flying squirrels, because it's just very cool. Um, but uh, again, quite distant, um, it's a lot of gorgeous, so, um, makes life a bit trickier. Um, so then another, uh, I suppose a night in Labahu, and then we stayed most of the next day. Uh, China is just awesome for names. So we, we spent the morning in Colourful Valley and then Azalea Lake, um, and then drove on to Jiajin Shan, which Beijing, um, where they were doing lots of, quote, improvements. Um, uh, and in effect, it was pretty trashed. They were um, doing something to make the river more photogenic. Um, so there's lots of building works and tractors and it was just unpleasant. So this is um, Labahu again. So again, really quite impressive scenery, but um, a bit frosty. Um, we found a baby Zubra Wapiti, which is quite nice a different parrot bill. So they're actually quite hard to see, as you can see in that, it's uh, slightly left to center if you can't see it. Um, but very drab brown birds, but parrot bills are kind of cool. Um, and then around Azalea Lake, um, we had the first of our tree creepers. So China seems to have three different tree creepers that we've seen. Um, very good having a decent guide who can tell you what's what. Um, and then really the uh, spotted nutcracker that really didn't care about us. It just sat there and scowled really while eating its uh, eating the nuts that it found in the around Azalea Lake. Um, but really confiding and uh, probably the best views I've ever had of a nutcracker. Um, and again, China seems to have a lot of nut hatches. Um, so this one's a chestnut vented. Um, We've seen quite a few different ones here. Um, and then uh, a better shot really of a grey who did feel better. Um, I'm quite partial to feel better, uh, particularly the one that's coming up later on. Um, so again, you know, quite nice, crisp, cold, you know, fine if you're Scottish or, and I guess Welsh weather. Um, and then just as we were going to leave, we found this um, caves stretching it, it had a door. Uh, and then into this kind of uh, cave slash cellar where there was this bat that we're told is greater tube nosed. Um, I'm not completely convinced it's not a horseshoe, but it's one of the most annoying, frustrating things when you're what, trying to watch mammals because very few people can tell you what bats what. Um, Cat has um, an international bat detector that works pretty well in many different places. Uh, and we've used that successfully in the Amazon even, um, but I'm sure there's, there's a lot of bats that should be on my list that aren't because you can't tell what they are. Um, they were a group of Tibetan macaques, which are just uh, somewhat chunky monkeys, I guess. They are quite big, solid, hairy, uh, well adapted to cold um, primates. Um, but I wouldn't argue with them because they do have fairly impressive canines. Um, and then Rufus Vented Tit, uh, again, there's lots of different tits in China. Um, and Rufus Vented is quite cute. This is a really great shot, not showing the Rufus Vent, unfortunately, but um, you know, nice crest, nice big cheek patches, uh, nice bird. So when we were in Labahu, it's also very good for Lady Amherst pheasant, apparently. Um, we did see a really cracking male that just screamed across the road we were walking on. Uh, this ridiculous tail that seemed to almost still be 
on the other side of the road while the bird was actually heading into the shrubbery. Um, but uh, unfortunately, you know, it was moving very quickly and no decent photograph was taken. Um, we also had grey cat pygmy woodpecker, which is seems to be fairly cosmopolitan. We've seen that quite a few places. Uh, Long-tailed shrike, Elliot's laughing thrush, again, is one of the laughing thrushes we saw fairly consistently throughout Sichuan. Uh, Rufus breasted eccentre, lots of eccentres also in China um, that are very nice. Um, and much as I think of them, it's quite a cute bird. These are slightly prettier. Um, and then we had a further grey-headed flying squirrel that um, was identified um, subsequently. And they can be quite difficult to identify the flying squirrels. There's a number that looks fairly similar. So we're now in Beijing or Jiajin Shan. Um, <laughs> it's excellent. Where are we going to go? We're going to walk in Leech Valley. Oh, that sounds like fun. Um, however, I'm quite sure Kat's going to butt in if I don't tell the story, but I will. Um, so this is Beijing. Uh, again, looks very pretty if you ignore the fact they're redirecting a river and putting different stones in it to make it look better for the tourists who come in to look at the um, autumnal tree. So then the leaves change and, and turn red. That's a lucky colour. So. So we're walking along this path and I'm chatting with Roland and Kat's behind us and she's like, Oi, uh, you might want to look to the right. So we do. And there is a very close red panda um, sitting on a branch or lying on a branch, really not very bothered. And um, I hate to think how many pictures of this cat and I took together, but it's certainly it's going to be four figures worth, I'm sure. Um, it just wasn't bothered. Uh, was, we were taking the pictures through um, some shrubbery, as you can see, there's some blurry bits where I just lead. But um, I think this one's right up there in the very top of my uh, wildlife experiences. Uh, so thanks for that cat. Um, it was just, <laughs> um, I would say it was clearly not bothered by us because I think this is possibly the most relaxed animal, sort of mammal I've ever seen. Um, it just, you know, it looks a bit like somebody's darted it um, or Stephen's given it some sed sedation before he does his dental work. But um, really beautiful. A lot, and interestingly, I think a lot more chestnut and the tail's a bit more banded than the other ones that we'd seen, um, although the same, same subspecies or species. Um, just ridiculously cute. And I know I'm talking to a bird group, but I'm sorry, it's a red panda and it's cute. Um, however, we also had uh, a new fulvetta, a different fulvetta, white bright fulvetta here, um, and rufous breasted eccenter. So we had quite a lot of rufous breasted eccenters throughout the trip along with Robin Accenter, so they were the two we mainly saw with the occasional Brown Accenter. Um, and then another Goral um, out during the day, which is nice because we tended to see them mainly at night. Um, but this one uh, was having a drink on a cliff face above us um, and actually looks a lot woolier and less grey. I think it's quite a young one. So. Um, but the white brow feel better. It's a very nice bird, I have to say. Um, and then <laughs> There's another call from Kat to go, uh, you just walk past another red panda. Um, so mortifying, but never mind. Um, we saw it uh, and this one was really orange um, and perhaps slightly less chilled than the previous one. Um, so let me just go back. So again, um, yeah, just hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of photos. Very nice bird. Uh, bird mammal. <laughs> Sorry. And then, uh, yeah, Grey Hooded Fulvetta again. Um, the Fulvetta is a fairly confiding. Uh, black brown tits, so uh, slightly further away. Um, I don't, I'm not quite sure where it is about the white eyes in China. Um, and our first rose finch, so Vinaceous rose finch female. Um, when we've been here um, previously, when we'd walked through the most ridiculous muddy path. I mean, it was just hideous. We were all, well, I certainly had fallen in it. Um, we'd seen sharks was finch, but um, not this time. 
So we also had uh, Fly Over Himalayan Griffin, Ravens, we had White Bright, Bruce Robin, Crimson Vested Woodpecker, Blue Fronted Robin, the Grey Crested Tit and Black Faced Laughing Thrush. So um, we didn't have, interestingly this trip we saw fewer laughing thrushes last, the previous time we'd seen great laughing thrushes and spotted laughing thrushes, but uh, not this time, and Huame, uh, but not uh, Huamai, not quite sure how you pronounce it, but. Um, so then we get up at half past four, uh, which is not my favourite time when it's freezing cold, out the door and then drive over uh, two different passes um, to move on to the next area. Um, so it was, we moved from this lovely, almost summery Beijing with nice golden conifers uh, to um, Jiajin Pass, which was absolutely Baltic and uh, everything frozen with uh, ice on all the bushes and the trees, very scenic. I'm glad I wasn't driving. Um, and this is Mengbei Pass, which wasn't as bad and domestic yak with quite, it's ridiculous face pattern. It looks a bit like it's going to be some undead yak, but uh, it wasn't. Um, but really, um, again, very impressive mountain scenery. Um, and coming back down the other side, uh, we saw a uh, very, uh, pikas are just amazing. Um, so they're kind of um, in, the, they're a lagomorph, so they're kind of related to rabbits and hares. But there's, and there's a whole range of them across Asia um, and a couple of species. Um, in North America um, and Glovers is one of the cute ones because it's got big ears and it's got a red nose um, and it just sat there and yeah, posed for pictures. Um, we were stuck for what seemed like hours at um, Roadworks um, but it was sunny and there was uh, some nice birds out in the sun so Elliot's laughing thrush, uh, another bird with a white eye and white collared euhinas so there were a few different euhinas around um, but this was a very nice posing one. Um, and then further on, we've got um, the Rufus Breastedek Centre, so it uh, makes a very nice Christmas card, Rufus Breastedek Centre, but uh, Robin makes a better, Robin Neck Centre is better. Uh, Rose Finches, which I think can be incredibly difficult to tell apart, so I'm told we have white brown, Chinese white brown at the top and pink rumped at the bottom. And then hiding in that bush is a babax, a Chinese babax, which again has a white eye um, and was somewhat loud, but somewhat cryptic, um, which is a bit annoying, but we did get some decent views of it at least. Um, so there's the Robin X Centre. Uh, that one has a slightly unusual shaped bill, um, but we did um, see quite a lot of them, but I'm quite happy to see a bird I can recognise easily. Uh, great crested tit, um, just madness, this fluff ball with a ridiculous mohican. And um, Rufus vented tit trying to uh, also have a nice crest and a little hint of a Rufus vent there. I think it looks a bit precarious, like it's going to fall off these pines. Um, but again, uh, a lot of tits in China, as I said. And then we have one of the prettiest birds, I think, that we we saw this trip. So the crested tit warbler, um, really difficult to get I mean, to get a picture of it. It's quite high up a pine tree or up a conifer anyway. Uh, really active. There's a pair of them, and we're struggling and struggling and struggling to get hold of a decent picture. Uh, and that's about as good as I got, but at least it's in the sun and you can see its crest, so I'll take that one. Um, different tree creeper, so Hodgson's tree creeper. Um, and uh, Chinese Vilbetta, so again, white eye bird, but uh, slightly different, a different species. And then we came to Barkham, and Barkham is, it's got what's called the Red Army Bridge, and that's one of the, I think it's where uh, Mao's army in the great route march north, across the Yangtze. I think it's the Yangtze, across this big river anyway. Um, so um, quite culturally significant. So we actually managed to get a little bit of culture in this time, which was um, good. So 
Barkham uh, was, uh, you know, very nice, and it has uh, a lot of these temples, which were really impressive. And then we stayed in Hongyuan, um, and that's outside our hotel, where they, um, not quite sure what this is, the huge thing in Sichuan, it seems to be you, the more ornate the lamppost, the better, uh, but also everything was lit up in neon colours. Um, not the best when you want to get a good night's sleep if the curtains aren't great, but um, I quite like it. Um, so next day is uh, mainly a travel day. So we're driving onto the Zoidi grasslands and to Flower Lake and a bit of spotlighting. So that's the Zoidi grasslands, which are pretty flat, uh, plain with quite a lot of uh, domestic animals on uh, with uh, snow covered mountains. Um, and it was as cold as it looks. However, it's pretty good for mammals and birds. So we came across a small group of Siberian roe deer on this grassy hillside. Um, and then they kind of started running away and we were like, what's that all about? And then we saw the wolf on the skyline, so a bit far away. Um, I mean, I guess it's, the, you know, from my point of view, a wolf's a wolf's a wolf. Whether you see it in North America or in China, it's in Norway or Poland. It's the same species, but it's a different subspecies, that one. Uh, horned lark, again, one of these ubiquitous birds. You seem to, I think ubiquitous is the right word, but you get to, to get them um, in lots of different places you visit. Um, but not the ground tit. The ground tit is uh, made of, I've only ever seen that in China, and it is very strange, but very cute. Um, again, quite approachable and just looks weird. Um, I think it's been in various different families before and then it's now um, back in the tit. And we had griffins and uh, twite. And it's like, sorry, you know, you kind of, um, I don't, well, I kind of almost assume that anything I see isn't something I would see at home. <coughs> and we, the, later on, there's, um, a, a very unusual looking twite that confuses for a long time. But oriental skylarks, again, red starts another family there's lots of in China. Um, and these are relatively distant white winged red starts. Um, I do like a bird that you know, does what its name says on the tin. So nice white wings. Um, and here is this weird twite. Apologies for the fact it's on a bunch of yak poop. But it's not quite leucistic. It's certainly not albino. But yes, weird. Um, so our guide was very interested in this one, Roland was very keen on it. Um, so we're up going towards Flower Lake. Uh, there's different pika. Um, and then you, on the plateau, honestly, black lip pika are just everywhere. They're great. Uh, Tibetan grey shrike, which is quite nice to have a different shrike. Um, we have a family group of black naped crane, uh, the juvenile being the middle one, but um, they were initially that is Flower Lake that is quite dry this time of year. Um, and then we have white rubbed snow finch. So we ended up with a couple of different snow finches, which again, uh, it's always nice to see new birds. Um, so we got a bit closer to the cranes, uh, which we're doing a bit of displaying. Um, I love that one in the bottom left. It just looks like it's really, really angry. Um, golden eagle, again, you know, I know we don't really see them down here, but back home in God's own country, north of the border, we do have them, but it's always a bit weird seeing them um, in other places. Um, black neck cranes, again, white eyes, but uh, really cool, really nice birds. Um, if a bit scruffy looking these ones and then uh, Rufus Knight's snow finch uh, so it's slightly different snow finch or a different snow finch but um, a bit more brightly coloured so a bit nicer in many ways um, and then that's the, that's Flower Lake um, with cranes and domestic yak and actually a really bad uh, yeah, that needs tipped uh, or tilted. It's uh, a bit squint, the lining of that one. Sorry about that. 
Um, and then also, uh, I suppose that's a closer white wing veg start. Uh, Tibetan lark is just a monster of a bird and just, they're just really chunky, large, large larks. Um, we'd seen that uh, previously up on uh, the, the uh, roof of the world in Shanghai. Um, and Saker falcon, um, which I think is increasingly hard to see because they keep getting caught uh, for the falconry trade. Um, and then at night, uh, a bit of spotlighting, and we have um, this might be a red fox, so the same species as we have, and the Tibetan fox, which is a fox drawn by a four year old. Um, it, somebody needs to make an animated movie about Tibetan foxes. They are just so weird looking, uh, really big heads, long snouts, um, wide face. Um, and they're great, and we've seen them in the daylight, sort of sneaking in between uh, the kiangs of the Tibetan wild ass, look, looking for, um, an, I suppose, an uh, unwary um, pika to have. We actually saw them get pikas before. Um, much as I love mammals, I'm never very keen on something getting eaten. Um, so the next day, we're back in the same area in the Zoiki grasslands, um, and we nip over the this pass, which was quite impressive, down to uh, Baji Forest, um, which we will re revisit the following day. We just kind of uh, ran out of time because we saw Palace's cat. So we had gone up, uh, we'd stopped and just were just wandering around um, the edge of the road. And uh, I can't remember, I think it was probably Roland spotted this very distant Palace's cat. Um, and we could see where it was going. Um, and it was on the right side of a, um, I suppose a small valley on the side of the um, road. So we snuck up the left side and had some good views with the scope. And then decided that we might try. So Kat and I came all the way back down and round and back up the other side of the valley um, and kind of crept along the side of it um, so we were looking down on this uh, palace's cat, which just was in the sun going, yeah, I see you. Uh, it's amazing, yellow eyes, just completely just not bothered by us. And we were being really careful not to get too close. We didn't want to disturb it, but um, it's sort of creeping forward in our bellies to cold, uh, at least it was dry, spiky grass um, and probably lots of uh, yak poop, but, um, you know, it was worth it just to spend some time. And we had, we spent a lot of time with this cat, just watching it, taking pictures, sneaking up, taking pictures. Again, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of photos of Palace's cat. And then uh, we were running a bit late by this time. So this is um, the pass over to Baji Forest. There's a lot of um, prayer flags around in Sichuan. Um, maybe not quite as many as there were in Qinghai, but certainly a lot. Uh, again, a really, really impressive pass, really good scenery. Um, and as we're going over uh, Hen Harrier, um, again, one of our birds, uh, again, looks like that one's got white eyes, whereas the white grump snowfinch looks like it's gone five rounds with Tyson and it's got a couple of black eyes. Um, one of the very few gazelles we saw this trip uh, in Qinghai, we saw a lot of uh, gazelle, we saw um, two different species there. But this trip, we had Tibetan gazelle, um, just very small numbers, and another wolf. Um, wolves tend to be pretty skittish, um, in my experience, and um, tend not to hang around very much. Um, but on the other side, we had uh, a lot of vultures. Um, so with Lamergar uh, nest building, it looks that's what that it's carrying a big stick uh, for its nest. Um, again, Himalayan griffin, and they were just soaring around at these cliffs. And um, black-billed magpie, which is uh, fairly similar to ours. In fact, I'm not sure it's not just a subspecies of ours, um, but I'm sure somebody will correct me if I'm wrong. Um, but again, really weird um, rock formations um, with a snow pigeon hiding in it. And then, <laughs> what can I say, white brown tip warbler, uh, possibly the I think probably the most beautiful bird that we saw this trip. Um, 
I think the fact they're on this kind of dull group like, I don't, I don't know if it is necessarily a dull group, but that kind of bright red um, barked shrub uh, in nice light and that kind of, on the male certainly that combination of sort of lilacs and purples and uh, I suppose a bit of blue uh, with the russet and the big red eye. Um, really nice bird. Um, again, not the easiest bird to photograph because uh, pretty active, but I have to say we were fairly happy with these uh, nice things, nice birds to see. Um, and then uh, we come down to the, the uh, forest um, and they're seeker deer, which is awesome because that's, I know we have them in the UK, uh, but I've managed not to see them in the UK. So that was a new mammal for me. Um, so um, spotted adults, uh, I think that's the main way you can tell them apart from red deer, I'm sure there's other ways. Um, and then we could hear this owl and we could hear this owl and we could hear this owl and we just couldn't see it and we could hear it and our guide had a tape and um, it was calling to the tape and we still couldn't see it and we still couldn't see it um, and I do believe actually it was Kat who found this who did see it and it was a lot lower down than um, Roland had expected it to be um, but you know I know that I keep saying I'm a mammal person that's gushed over a tip warbler but uh, owls are very cool um, and this uh, was a new owl for me. Um, we'd previously seen Himalayan owl last time. Uh, it's a bit like a tawny owl. Um, I think split from a tawny owl. Um, but this is a bit more like some of the, the owls I've seen in America, like barred owl. Um, and that's him calling. Um, and then we have crossbill. And he's like, OK, this one I've gone from something really different, like um, a tip warbler. And you get a crossbill being straight back to, oh, some of these birds are the same as home. And at night, um, we had some really rubbish views of a Chinese mountain cat, uh, which is also called the Chinese desert cat. But given that we were up in the mountains, it seemed more sensible to be calling it this name. Um, it's the back of its head. But um, again, uh, Zoggy grassland seems to be the place to go to see it. And certainly a lot of trips will specifically go to see it. And then that's the owl actually calling. Um, so the next day, having driven all the way back to uh, the other side of the pass, we then um, packed up, headed off to spend pretty much all day in Baji Forest and then um, moving on, stopping in a local village. Um, so um, accommodation in Sichuan was um, from okay to great. Uh, we didn't have any really um, terrible um, accommodation, some of it was fairly uh, simple, um, but we had hot water, we had toilets, um, so we were okay, a bed. Um, the food was tremendous now, so Kat and I both vegetarian, um, we totally just handed um, all the food choices over to Roland who would take us and we would tend to eat in local restaurants rather than um, hotels. Um, the food was ridiculously cheap and incredible so he would order uh, a, a number of different vegetarian dishes and he'd have a meat dish to, you know, for himself um, and it was just really tasty really really good and lots of noodles lots of tofu um, I'm not going to tell the blood tofu story because cat will kill me um, so different tits Japanese tit, Szechuan tit, um, Per David's laughing thrush or different laughing thrush very plain uh, apart from his bright yellow bill, pretty unmarked brown. Um, spectacled parrot bill, um, different parrot bill, but or, I can't remember if we've seen or not, I'm going to get parrot bills and full feathers mixed up. But again, quite a, a little cutie. Um, I do like a bird that looks, I mean, I think he looks quite sweet, to be fair. Uh, Szechuan tit looks uh, very similar to some of ours. And Japanese tit and greenback tit seem very similar to me as well, but um, good birds to see. Um, and then, <laughs> so Kat and I got out of the vehicle and Roland said, right, just walk down this track and keep an eye out for blue-eared pheasant. So we walk and walk and walk and see relatively little 
um, down this fairly steep hill that was a bit slippy and a bit icy and um, you know a bit pretty but really not very much around and you get to the bottom and he's going come on come on come on I've just seen this big flock of pheasant and there's about 20 blue ear pheasants about a mile up the road that he'd on his way down to meet us with the vehicle had seen um, so the last trip we'd seen white eared pheasant um, and this was the blue one um, really nice bird um, yeah, I quite like a pheasant I have to say um, mainly I think because they're colourful and they're big and uh, usually fairly easily identifiable but um, nice birds. Um, so we're walking through the forest and there is a uh, pika, again a different one um, that there was some, uh, well quite a lot of discussion about whether it was uh, which species it was anyway and ultimately it turns out to be a gansu pika which is would make sense given that we were quite near Gansu at this point. Um, different bullfinch uh, than ours, uh, could be a headed bullfinch, um, male and female there. Um, nice birds, I have to say. Um, um, I'm lucky I have um, well, three, four, five bullfinches come to my garden pretty much every day. So um, I think ours are probably still more attractive than these. Um, and then um, Red throated thrush, because the last time we were there, we'd seen black throated thrush, but this time it's red throated thrush. Uh, again, very high up in a conifer on one of the passes on the way back. Um, oh dear. <laughs> so we again spent the day in part of Bajin, in the morning in part of Bajin Forest, drove on to Pingwei, um, and on the way to Pingwei, we Stopped at Chuan Zizi, which um, was almost deserted because uh, it's very much a summer uh, place, uh, like a summer, I suppose, a seasonal city almost. It's quite a big town anyway, um, but there was very few people there, but it was very nice lunch. And then we drove over a Zhu Baizing Pass. Uh, we were given the choice of whether to take the road over the pass or to go through the uh, tunnel. Went to a big tunnel built, and we chose the former, which I'm not sure we why. Um, so that morning, um, really good for the new birds. So obviously, uh, Eurasian Peter woodpecker had seen that in Europe, but always nice to see a woodpecker. Um, Chris Wolski's not hatch. Um, I think possibly one of possibly might be my favourite not hatch. Um, Delta Pond is pretty pretty beautiful to be fair. Um, this was one that was on the hit list, um, along with Sichuan J, um, which I think is getting harder to see, but um, this one was a bit difficult, um, again, in a conifer, but then this came out perfectly in a ray of sunshine. Um, so that was rather nice, but at the top, I think I'm quite happy with that one. Uh, nice bird, uh, we saw a couple of times through the trip, but that was our best view. Uh, nice little bit of forest. Um, it's also the only place we saw common pheasants, which was good. So we drive back uh, and we come across this top left, which is Chinese Zokor, uh, on actually on the grasslands. So we've seen um, a lot of their like molehills in effect. Uh, and we'd seen them last time, and the reputation is that if you move, you know, dig around with your hands in their um, in, in this pile of disturbed air, that if you open the tunnel, it will feel the draft and will come and fill it in. And that had been tried last the first trip and without success. However, this time, uh, that's a Chinese zookor. So it's a bit like a mole rat, uh, like uh, the, the giant the giant one in Ethiopia. Big animal, all we really saw was the front half of its face. But very cool. So on the pass over, we saw our only, uh, our first lot of blue sheep in China. We were so close to where the blue sheep is, not the blue sheep, but it's a dwarf blue sheep, which is now split. Uh, but I can't claim that this is the regular Baral blue sheep, the one that you see. Um, snow leopard hunting. Um, and we've seen them uh, before in a number of places. And then we had um, over the past uh, and very this 
and this is Vivi Jean Zen uh, white name Sero. Um, so again, Sero, but like Gora, it's one of the goat antelopes, but this is um, a black animal with a big white long hairy mane and bright ginger black leg. Uh, it's just mad. Um, and we stop on this pass to take pictures of these uh, ungulates, and that's the pass. And I have never been as glad, I think, that we didn't take the tunnel because it was just stunning. It was freezing, but it was just beautiful. Um, so the next day is our giant panda day. So we um, set up walking up this valley and it is misty and foggy and or raining all the time. There is a path, it is really muddy because there's been cows up, it is really slippy. The visibility is really poor. There is a reasonable sized river in the middle of this valley that we have to cross 12 times, six times up and six times back. And you have to leap from rock to rock, which are wet and slippy, and I'm not the most sure booted. So on number seven, I managed to slip off a rock that I jumped on and went in, fortunately, just over my boots, not falling in. Um, and then there was a lot of flotsam and I managed to fall through that up to my uh, groin. Um, so fortunately, I managed not to get stabbed through my femoral artery, but I, that just left me very shaken and uh, not very keen. Um, and that is the nearest picture to a giant panda, that kind of picture of the on the rock um, we struggled to see the other side of the valley because of the mess it was really unfortunate that there were very few birds about um, we just got wet and cold um, and miserable um, and at one point we could see some fern bamboo moving and it could have been a giant panda but we didn't see anything so that was super disappointing so we left from uh, Pingwe and went on to Tanjiaho because we were like, we've been there before, they've got mammals and great birds. So we're in Tanjiaho all day. The following day, we go for a 17 kilometer walk and um, we took the tourist bus up. So Tanjiaho has got kind of two valleys, um, one of which leads to a sacred mountain that I think is possible only the Chinese would has a path from the bottom of where you got off the bus right to the top of this mountain um, and it's either a sort of gently sloping or a flat path or and if it's remotely uh, steep then there are steps so you basically climb thousands and thousands of steps but this day we took the bus up the left hand valley to the top and then basically walked back down to the hotel um, and we had nice views of various birds um, on the way up. So uh, much closer to the red bull blue magpie, which are really ridiculous. Um, you know, that tail is just mad, um, but really beautiful bird with a red eye, excuse me, rather than a white one. Uh, Hodgson's red star, um, again, really, you know, nice bird, red stars, what's not to like. Um, and then um, we start getting into the fork tail territory. So we have white crowned fork tail, which again, really nice bird. Uh, we have uh, red billed Leothrix uh, in the bamboo. Um, I feel like a bird that's easily identifiable, but I prefer it if it got a bit closer and be a bit less hiding in the bamboo. Um, white cap water red star, we've mm -hmm. seen a lot last time along the rivers, um, really common uh, bird, but again, really pretty. And Venus or Venus throated parrot bill, which I have to say, just <laughs> I don't know, it looks a bit like it's one of the angry birds or something. It's a very sweet looking bird, but it, it kind of looks like it, its head and doesn't have a neck and its head's just stuck in its chest, um, but very sweet. Um, I do like a parrot bill. Um, brown dipper, so a slightly different dipper or a different dipper than ours, a different Silvetta, uh, David Silvetta. Uh, so Per David, clearly the, the I think monk who was a, a priest, I think a monk who was um, the deer, Per David's deer, is named after him as he described the giant panda, I think as well. 
uh, but all the birds seem, seems to have are fairly um, dull colored, let's say. Um, we saw this tough to deer at the side of the road, which again was pretty noticeable, not really bothered by us. Um, and given that previously the only tough to deer I'd seen had been barely visible through a scope at the very top of a mountain in uh, the previous trip in uh, Beijing, um, that we were very well, I was, I think we were both pretty happy to see that. And then Tibetan macaque uh, back at the um, hotel being. Um, fairly amorous, let's say, and involved in some fairly dodgy behaviour. Um, so <laughs> the next day is uh, Motianlin Mountain, so one of the sacred mountains with thousands, literally thousands of steps. And the very top of the mountain is the boundary between Sichuan and Gansu. So if you, um, depending how strict of the list you are, if you want a Gansu list, that's where you can start. Um, so on the way up, we have Sichuan Takin. So Tam Jiahe is legendary for mammals. So um, all the mammal tours will go there because particularly at night, there are just great um, chances of mammals. There's Takin, there's ferret badger, there's hog badger, there's leopard cat, there's um, mast civet, uh, mast pan, Himalayan civet, last civet, there's um, various small um, mice, there's um, serow, there's goral, there's um, lots of different flying squirrels, it's just awesome. But they also have really nice birds, so they have the heated pipetta, which we've seen before, but they also have black-faced laughing thrush, uh, which we had much better views at this time than last time. Um, and then Stephen, this is the one you asked about. Um, golden breasted gulbetta. I mean, yeah, it's a stonker. It's just so different from the other gulbettas. I mean, the other ones are also grey and brown, and this one is just gold and black and white. But really, um, I think, again, up there with the uh, tip babblers, the tip warbler, sorry, as um, one of the most beautiful birds we saw that trip. I think, um, and you know, quite well behaved when it came to taking pictures. Um, but we also have uh, standard nut hatches, uh, Power David's tip, which is a bit cross with us, um, Hodgson's tree keeper again, and a white backed woodpecker. So I think the same bird as I've seen in Eastern Europe. Um, and that was at the place where the year before we'd had uh, a pair of tragopans, uh, Temex tragopans, which did not put in an appearance this time, but there were a lot of people up the mountain. Um, and we'd had um, one of the ground squirrels, uh, long, -nose, long nose ground squirrel, which uh, again didn't show, I saw a pair of rock squirrel that it was, which didn't show this time. So we had, however, blue fronted red fire, which is really rather nice. Um, I think that made a calendar and a business card that list. So having walked all the way up um, and then gone higher than before so we could sneak into Gansu, we then had to turn around and come back without seeing tiger pants. Uh, but we did on the way back down have different birds, which just seems ridiculous. So we had slightly bunting in the undergrowth. We had great parrot bills, which uh, just a bit kept hiding behind that branch, which is a bit annoying, but um, great views anyway. And then we had a little fork tail as opposed to a white crown. Um, so very tiring, but God, did we get our steps in that day. And then we have a really beautiful Sichuan Takin. So um, again, one of the Goantlops, I think they're a bit like a wildebeest on steroids um, or a muskox on a diet, I suppose, in some ways, but really nice mammal. Um, I think they look quite benign, but um, there's lots of warnings about them in the hotel because um, they do like to come out um, so that we stay in a hotel that's uh, got multiple buildings. Um, so it's almost like you then uh, look in each building. Um, there's a number of hotel rooms. Uh, so you have to walk across a central uh, grass area, which they quite like to be on, uh, particularly at night. And if you come out, so uh, this is before I stop smoking, so you go out for a cigarette and um, 
the peak tacking on the terrace, uh, which is a bit disconcerting because like many big mammals, they're surprisingly sneaky and quiet. Um, white wagtails. Um, and then at night we had uh, northern hog badger, which um, I'm quite prone, I'm quite, again, quite partial to badgers. Uh, mass pams a bit, again, very cute. And uh, brown breasted bulbul, bull uh, I guess this is probably uh, during the day rather than at night, obviously that was the only time I think we saw them. So <laughs> then we have a bit of a disaster day. So we've got this really big vibe to full paint. Um, and the car breaks down. And we just came out of this town um, where we'd seen statues of uh, giant salamanders. And it turns out that this is um, where they basically farm them. So the people seem to keep them and then they get sold because they're a delicacy. And it's a really endangered amphibian. It's like six feet, I think, in, and it's fully adult. Um, and the car dies on an upslope and just gradually we have to reverse down in neutral um, into the village. And here's the statue of the giant salamanders. And Kat and I are very, very keen to see them. And there's a woman who has a bunch of giant salamanders, um, I guess, in a shed or in the garage, where she kept in the back garden. And we kind of asked Roland to ask her if we could go and see them. And we were told, no, unless you buy one. And I didn't really fancy my chance of fitting it in hand luggage, although it would have been nice to have bought one and released it, but I'm not sure that would have done very well. So while we were waiting for the car, we did a bit of birding uh, over um, the bridge in the middle of this small town. And we had elegant bunting, uh, collared crow, uh, not massively, Great color on that one. Different red starts with Dorian red start and a uh, nice sweet fresh symmetry bubble. Um, so, actually, not a bit of pain. We would hope to get to see the um, crested ibis on the roost, but we didn't get there until way past dark. So, we get very late to full ping. We get up very early and walk up this mountain to try and find the golden thumb of monkeys. And uh, it's snowing and it's freezing and there's no fun with monkeys and we are really disappointed because previously we'd seen them incredibly far away so even through a scope you couldn't really look out very well and we walked back down to um, like the tourist hotel we weren't staying in but the hotel the base of this mountain and they're all behind us it's a bit warmer and then we drove back to Yangjian uh, which is where the crested ibis are, and it is absolutely the most minging nature reserve I've ever been in. It's a stinking river full of rubbish, uh, and then drive back to Zhujiang Yan, which is near Chengdu. So, this is the golden snubbed monkey. Um, the one that's on all the Attenborough ones, they're obviously um, being fed, <coughs> I think, yam or sweet potato, um, and they're just amazing so this we lost a lot of time because that sorry that one is an adult and the dominant male develops these um like warty protuberances that are the mouth this is a very young one who looks wet and miserable but oh they're just so cute they are so cute um well the big male probably not quite so cute because he's uh, got a nice set of teeth but um there's something about primates that, um, well, obviously, I think, you know, I'm always, I don't know why I'm surprised that they, they seem quite like us, but um, so the, the maternal, you know, comforting the child, keeping it warm, always you know, quite impressive. Um, and then we go, uh, and I think I managed not to show how awful the pitch in the, the reserve is, um, but Crested Ibis, the bird I've wanted to see since I was six or seven um, and actually is more kind of more ugly and more beautiful at the same time than I had expected so I had kind of expected to be fairly grey from the memory of from the childhood of this card which I still have somewhere uh, but I hadn't really expected this kind of pinky salmon pinky wash and the I don't, I don't remember the picture of the red face 
Um, but seriously horrible reserve, really messy, really dirty, thinky. Um, but we probably saw 40 plus items, which is um, we were very happy with. Um, very, very beautiful, actually. The bird, not the place. Um, so, um, and it, it just, it's an interesting bird. I mean, I suppose they're quite like some of the bald ibises that I haven't seen either. Um, but, yeah, I'll take the crested ibis and I can try and get myself bald ibises a couple of times. But I'm, I'm really glad we did this, even though we ended up, um, I suppose we spent quite a bit of time on the road um, and poor Roland had to be able to drive and uh, didn't couldn't. Um, so we then um, are back in Dujianjian, which is where we based and we go out birding and actually what we were looking for is what better parrot bill because that's um, almost a specialty. And there we are, spot with the parrot bill, which is just, again, I don't know, it just, it doesn't look real. It looks a bit like it's been made from um, other parts of other birds or drawn by a child. But um, yeah, really nice way to finish. And then I have to finish up by sharing the kind of things that you have all the time. Um, the signs in China are great. I love the fact we have charmingly cute pandas actively jumping golden monkeys and defiantly proud packing. Um, there's just some of the, I, I don't know whether it's Google Translate or somebody who says they can speak English, but you know, I love the carefully fall, I love the extinguisher sparks, remain your love. Um, pay attention to the beast. I'm not actually quite sure what that's supposed to be, but I do believe it's probably a black bear. So Asiatic black bear found in Tanjiahu, apparently, but we have never seen them in six days. Uh, and I just, if anybody can explain how that translates to the mountains, tourism, burn outing, don't take anything to Mars. Your guess is as good as mine. And there we go. Yes, wildebeest come out at night. Don't go out alone. Um, watch out for the rolling stones. Interesting choice. And I think my favourite is um, my love for flowers and dump flowers and greenery for me, Tim. No idea what that's supposed to be. No idea at all what that is. It's just make me laugh. The other place that uh, I'm sure Stephen can attest for those signs that are amazing is Amish Alphabet, where the ones they do to try and keep people from speeding are hysterical. And obviously at Full Ping, which is a giant panda reserve, um, they have lots of giant pandas, um, which are quite cute. Um, not that we saw any wild ones, but um, some nice artwork. And because I'm nice, and because I know people want to see pictures of the tiger pandas, is the three of the male and one of the female from the previous trip and that is a bird and a half. Um, top right one is actually in a tree which is you know not really where I expect to see my pheasants but um, there you go um, really impressive I know that perhaps other trigger pans have, have, have more impressive blue wattles but um, this one will do me and he beautifully toned in the background colour scheme I chose for this talk and there is the male in his glory and I think that's it so I'm sorry I, I did go on quite a bit um, so um, I think I need to do that yes so sorry about that <laughs> I uh, don't, nothing to apologise for, Kenny. That was fantastic. Um, so many jaw-dropping birds, but also animals more widely, uh, mammals in particular. I think you definitely have an ungulate problem, but uh, when there's so many, uh, you've got to take yeah. a look at them. <laughs> oh, yeah, for sure. I mean, I, the, 
disappointment was definitely not seeing the giant salamander. I really want to see a giant salamander. I trade an ongoer for a giant salamander. Well, yeah, don't blame you. Um, right, so if anyone's got any questions, please pop them in the chat. Um, Sophie was asking, um, for all your nocturnal mammal sightings, were you sort of using um, a flashlight or were you yeah. using thermal imager or anything? No, um, because thermal images are, we, we haven't used them. Somebody had, a couple of people had thermal imaging binoculars were in the Amazon, which were really helpful, but are hugely expensive. We were using uh, lead lensers um, and um, uh, our leader had a torch as well. So, um, yeah, I mean, the, 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 so in some ways, the good thing about Tangiaho, particularly for the nocturnal stuff, which is the very best, is that it's quite a narrow, steep valley. So things, you know, things are, tend to be fairly close to the road. Um, but yes, they're just normal torches. Okay. You flash them. Yeah, yeah. Well, it seems like you did, did very well just with a normal torch. No need to, to go too fancy if it, if it works. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. uh, I think the trouble for us, the, the, where we always struggle in some ways, is um, trying to light things and take pictures. So it's great if you've got a guy who's going to hold the torch on it and you can just 